Welcome to Queenie's Supper Club and Cocktails, a classic Midwestern supper club inside the United Center. A classic supper club, which can be found in many of the Midwestern states, is really just an approachable, comfortable place to meet family and friends for dinner and drinks. Uh, it dates back to Virginia, Queenie Wirtz, who was the wife of the famous Arthur Wirtz, who owned and operated the Chicago Blackhawks in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. She was known as the Queen of Chicago Stadium. She ruled and hosted in such a grand fashion that she was considered the queen and uh, was a very, very hospitable uh, woman. On the backside of the restaurant is a lounge. It's a beautiful furniture layout over there. And that's just sort of a gathering area for folks. It is able to be reserved for up to 30, 40 people. The uh, artist who helped us with the taxidermy, she made sure that all of these animals were indigenous to the Midwest. People really love the fox. And then we have bar seating. There's 15 seats at the bar proper and then certainly comfortable room for up to 75, 80 people within the bar itself. Now in the dining room, 240 seated. The balcony is in that 240 seated. That's a great environment out there. It can be a little loud, but actually we're finding that customers like that. When they're here for a game or certainly for a concert and we've got an activation in the atrium, it just feels like a party out there. You look over here, we have these beautiful caves, which have the curtains that can be drawn for that, that private meeting setting. Premium seat customers are, are liking it. They like the option to not necessarily have to eat in their suite all of the time. So it's a great option to entertain a client, to have an important meeting or discussion privately before getting together with a larger group in their suite. Um, and it's just a break from a norm. If you're a premium seating customer and you're coming to maybe 80 games a year, it's great to have an option. The dining room is really configured in this fashion for traditional service, but for private events, it can, it re can really become anything. We're very proud to have used almost exclusively local craftsmen. Many of the chairs and the tables were created locally here in Chicago. So while that is more time consuming and doesn't happen as quickly as going overseas, it was something that was important to us and that we wanted to do because we know that there's so much talent in the community. The millwork at the bar, you see it's herringboned here. The millworker would tell you that this was the hardest part to create. Who better to have a sense of um, what this era and what this type of restaurant looked and felt like than the, the people who had lived through it. That was always in the plan to incorporate a piano of some kind, but we weren't sure what direction that would take, but we were able to find a local craftsman who restores old Steinway pianos. And when we walked into his a garage where he had them restored, we saw it right away and we knew that was the one. Every night for about three hours during the peak of business, we have a rotating list of local piano players. You're immediately brought back to a time when you were a kid thinking about foods that you may have eaten long, long ago, but that are recognizable and not and they don't intimidate your casual diner. Think of um, your typical supper club fare, fried chicken, broiled walleye, trout almondine, gigantic plates of Alaskan king crab legs, but also very approachable things like um, a great chopped hamburger steak and various steaks and chops. So you have to have a little something for everybody, right? So there, there is some healthier fare. We do have simply grilled fish. We do have a lot of vegetarian and vegan options. These are the drinks you would have seen back 20, 30, 40 years ago. Brandy old fashions versus what you might see in most menus today, which would be bourbon old fashions. This market is still hungry for interesting and unique takes on old fashioned drinks. Old fashioned in Manhattan have been the top selling drinks, but we also have cocktails on draft and we have an amazing frozen margarita and we have you know a beautiful selection of ice cream drinks like the Orange Whip or Brandy Alexander. The Orange Whip is most famously known from some scenes in Blues Brothers. It's a vodka and orange liqueur drink. Tastes a lot like a fancy orange Julius with booze. We've been open since September, and in that time, we've already built a good base of repeat diners. They love the interaction. They love recognizing the manager and their favorite server. We're seeing people uh, who come to every concert who are making this part of their concert ritual. They're coming well before the concert because they've driven a, a long way, and they don't have to park twice and deal with a, a restaurant downtown. They have the ability to park once, dine here, and go right into a great show. This is not 
um, designed to exclude anybody. Um, so it's not just open to premium seating members, it's open to the public and anybody can access it during event days. 50% of our business each each time that we are open is, is walk-in. Many customers are comfortable making reservations and are able to do that online or via the phone. But for the most part, people who are trying it out for the first time, they typically walk in. The fastest way is through our atrium and you'll walk right through the gate four doors. So the, the big illuminated gate four sign, which is just past the Michael Jordan statue. And you'll take that one level up and that's where your arrival experience happens. We thought three hours prior to event start time was a, was a reasonable amount of time for people to get here, fight through Chicago traffic, get to their reservation, and have a leisurely but yet upscale experience uh, while not feeling rushed to sprint out the door to make sure you're there for the anthem and for puck drop and for tip off. That certainly seems to be enough time for customers and they, they like that. We keep the dining room and the bar open through the conclusion of the game in one hour post. We partnered with Heisler Hospitality, which is the local restaurateur and bar group who helped pitch the idea of the supper club, but also was very, very instrumental in designing the furniture, fixtures, and equipment and the overall layout of the restaurant. We partnered with Rugo Raff from Chicago as an architect. So they were the people who made it happen. Heisler dreamt it up in coordination with us and Ruger Raff delivered really just a stunning, stunning room. This is the former uh, offices for both teams, the Bulls and the Blackhawks. So the level itself had some plumbing, obviously had plenty of electrical, but there were pockets where we had to create what we thought was the best location for the kitchen. Unfortunately, square footage was not a problem. And with the addition of the atrium, moving those offices out of here really gave us the ability to have a completely blank canvas. And we're fortunate to have an ownership that put up uh, significant dollars to, to do it right. And it's a full service American brigade style kitchen. It's much like you would see in any large restaurant or hotel and can service many, many guests over the course of a short period of time.